Welcome everyone to a brand new NR 2003 series on the channel, NASCAR 20 years later. The 2002 roster with the 2022 cars, schedule, race format, point system, and added on we have wings just because I wanted to. I'm joined in the booth by Gary Owen, and Gary, I'm excited to get this series and season underway and see what happens when the drivers from 2002 take on modern day NASCAR. Absolutely, here as we see this 2002 grid, you know, one thing that's shared in common here, Jay, with this grid as we compare it to now is there are a bunch of old people at this point. Um, here as we got Dale Jarrett starting on pole with, I believe, that Sterling Marlin in that number 40 machine. And just behind, you got uh, Kurt Busch, one of the drivers is still on the grid in 2022, actually. They're one of the few, I think you said, uh, the only other one on the grid is Kevin Harvick, if I'm not mistaken, there in that back in that number 29 car, who's somewhere a little bit deeper in the grid. But of course, you got Tony Stewart, the 2002 champion on the grid as well. We'll see how close we can replicate that here with this 2002 series but jay there's a whole bunch of different diverse tracks that these guys got to go up against you got to turn right a little bit more it's not just turn to left this year uh, with a couple of road courses they got like six seven road courses that they got to deal with this year as well which could really throw a curveball uh at how this 2002 and our 2003 season plays out 20 years later the switch he's having to go to the pit lane that is uh, the number seven, yeah, the number seven, I believe, of Casey Atwood. So an unfortunate start for him already before this season even gets started. He's on the pit lane. But as we look back up front, Del Jarrett is able to get away easy on that inside lane. Actually, for a moment, looked like he was able to uh, going to be able to pull up to the outside to, to uh, go up in front of Sterling Marlin, but didn't do it. And has Kurt Busch to right behind him on the inside. Uh, young driver at this time, a Kurt Busch, and then also a, another young driver in the second car on the outside lane in Matt Kenseth. And there you see just in front of Kenseth right now is that 40 a veteran at this point, Sterling Marlin in the, the aging years of his career at this point here in 2002, relying on that DeWalt machine in the background there to get on his back bumper, maybe push him ahead here. Now you see Rusty Wallace almost look there to go three wide in the middle. And already, Jay, we got the young kid of Kurt Busch hanging out, the veteran of Dale Jarrett going to dive to the inside. They're kind of saying, hey, old guy, get out of my way. Here I come. And I'm going to come through to lead the first lap of this Daytona 500. Yeah, Kurt Busch wasting no time at all. Saw the moment to go to the inside of Del Jarrett took it and he's going to lead the first lap of this race Del Jarrett gets hung out to the outside now having to uh, work with Sterling Marlin and actually they're going to wind up taking a three wide up here towards the top Kurt Busch going to be able to choose what lane he wants to block but Tony Stewart takes Bobby the Bonnie three wide Del Jarrett up on the outside with Sterling Marlin and they're going to go three wide for a couple of different rows here and that's something that's really sketchy here at Daytona you can get three wide but it, it, the, the track is so much tighter than like say Talladega that when you get three wide it can be a little bit sketchy and especially if you go four wide four wide is almost a guaranteed wreck so early on they are are being extremely uh, aggressive and the intensity is already picked up. You can see Del Jarrett and Sterling Marlin actually hung out to the outside. The only two drivers on that outside lane, that's going to create pretty much everybody in the middle passing those two anytime they get into the corners. Jay, notice uh, way up ahead, I see, I think towards the exit of turn two to going down the back straightaway. Uh, Casey Atwood, who struggled to actually be on the starting grid right now, is way off the pace, of course, with no help from the slipstream. Looks like he's got speed in that car, but nonetheless, that's still going to be a factor. 190 miles per hour. So it looks like this car is actually 100% fine. Just First half of the pack, and Bobby Labonte jumping out front, leading those three lanes behind him. Here they come up with Casey Atwood. Bobby Labonte might be okay, but those three groups behind him, those three lanes behind him, that's going to be an issue. It looks like he's going to jump up to the middle lane, and that's going to wind up hurting both the middle lane and potentially the top lane the inside lane look they go right by him Bobby Labonte is able to get by him so is Ryan Newman Ricky Craven but then Tony Stewart that entire inside or the, the entire middle and even outside lane you can see him get held up right there now Atwood will get up to speed and won't hold them up too much longer once he gets up to speed but certainly uh, was enough to knock Tony Stewart and that, uh, that entire middle and outside lanes way back and it has changed the intensity of this pack massively I mean it's just a menacing look for these guys in their rear view mirrors they look back and they just see three by three and they are ready to of course engulf this main pack and they are once again reconnected and you're seeing each of those cars that get themselves single filed out they easily run down the leaders again and now we've gotten the whole pack pretty much connected kevin harvick was able to do so kyle petty uh jeff green tony stewart they all got back up here connected to the pack led the pack back up and now uh we still have ryan newman leading this race but casey kane or sorry bill elliott is right there in that nine car bobby labani leading the outside lane dale jr third car line on the inside now second car because ryan newman keeps switching lanes and kevin harvick actually is going to force his way to the inside 
and force that third lane to come back in action once again. Jeff Green following him. Tony Stewart stuck up in the middle, and Jeff Gordon is trying to follow uh, through the 11 car. In the background, and now we have two laps to go on the stage. All of a sudden, you're seeing the intensity pick up. Now we got some more three wide looking to, to happen up here in the front part of this pack. Mark Martin leading that, that middle lane right now uh, with not too much help behind him. Now it's just the, the 19 shuffle to the outside, and it's really the three wide kind of went away as soon as almost it started. And coming to the final lap now here in stage one, and it's going to be Newman. It's going to be Labonte side by side as they head down into turn one. Keep in mind, only the top ten get points here, and you see some three wide right in that area now as they're battling for that final spot in the top ten. And there goes that 30 car to the inside, and they're going to be three wide for just a second position as they head down this back straightaway. Jay Newman, uh, not what he wants right now, a little bit of disorganization behind him while Labonte has all the help on the outside. Yeah, he does have Elliott right behind him, but Jeff Green down on the inside, kind of far back. If, if Ryan Newman decides to jump down to the inside, he's going to have no one with him. So he decides to stay in that middle lane, force Labonte to stay up high. And Newman really doesn't have, or Labonte doesn't really have anybody working with him right now. Off turn four, coming down to the trioval. Labonte has the advantage into the trioval, and Labonte in the outside lane wins stage one. That'll be the end of stage one. We come around to grab the caution flag. Bobby Labonte ends, or gets the first stage win of the season right Back in Daytona for the restart of Stage 2. Bobby Labonte, your leader. Ryan Newman in second place. Doe Jr. in third. Bill Elliott in fourth. Now, in NR 2003, there are no double file restarts. They're always going to be single file. So, especially at a place like here at Daytona and Talladega, it's going to take them a moment before they get back too wide again and get that momentum built back up and get the energy built back up. You see Ryan Newman immediately take the advantage to the inside. Bobby the Bonnie is left with no help. Everybody decides to go to the inside and turns one and two. Now down the back straightaway, see some, we expect to see some move back up to the outside again, and the pack is going to get formed up. They're still pretty much single file all the way out through, but that's not going to last for very long. We'll see them two wide again and possibly even three wide within a couple of laps once they get the energy back. Yeah, it'll be an issue for him, and of course, they're going to have to pay attention when he comes back out on the track, and maybe that's part of the reason why we saw a little bit of a separation there between now yeah. almost uh, the main pack and then like a little sub pack there. Yeah, there's a couple cars kind of straggling to this lead pack, but there is certainly a second pack back here with a ton of drivers in it. You got drivers like Rusty Wallace, who's been struggling a little bit back here. Uh, you also got Ward Burton. You got Terry Labonte uh, in the second group. I think it's Michael Waltrip. Yeah, Michael Waltrip there as well. So there's a there's a, a couple big name drivers back here in this second group that are now de uh, that are now detached from the first group. But luckily for them, there's kind of a few stragglers here that will still have a little bit of draft in the front group. Might pull them forward. But we saw in that entire first stage, uh, we had all 39 cars that were on the Whoa, as we have a big checkup right here. Blaney. It's Dave Blaney coming off the pit lane. We've seen this before be an issue at this track, and Dave Blaney without a, a, a rear bumper cover stacks up the pretty much the entire first pack, and now we have a huge breakaway. Jimmy Johnson going to be by himself, but now we have just seven, eight, nine cars in the lead group. Everybody else got slowed up, got checked up. Surprised there wasn't a big crash, but it did create officially a first and second group now that second group this time let's check and see where they were at they they'd still lost time it's not a it's not a, a huge amount of time but losing time is worse than gaining any and they're they're now six seconds back from that lead group jimmy johnson falling back to them so that'll give them another car there's only 10 cars in this lead pack and then you go all the way back here and you have about uh 29 or so i think in this second group so um Certainly going to be, I mean, the, the numbers for them, Gary, in the second pack, they're huge. They're, they're, there's a lot more in the second group than there is in the first pack, but the distance, six seconds, and they continuously keep losing time as well or just not gaining anything. Uh, I, I don't think they're going to have enough time to even gain back up here to this lead group. I think we already pretty much know the drivers that are going to be in the top ten. We just need to figure out what order they're going to be in at the end of the stage in 14 laps. Back to Daytona for the start of Stage 3, and unfortunately, we had some technical difficulties which resulted in Stage 2 finishing early, the race being restarted, and the lineup being shuffled. But your top 10 finishers in Stage 2 were Ryan Newman in 1st, Bobby Labonte in 2nd, Bill Elliott in 3rd, Mark Martin in 4th, Ricky Rudd in 5th, Kyle Petty 6th, Ricky Craven 7th, Jeff Green in 8th, Ken Schrader in 9th, and Dell Jr. rounding out the top 10 to finish off Stage 2. But what this does is it still gives us a 50 lap stage three as planned all along. And it still forces these drivers to have to make a pit stop at some point in this race, whether it be under yellow flag condition or green flag condition. And what it also does is it shuffles up the order of this race. We no longer have Bobby Labonte and Ryan Newman up here battling for the lead side by side. Now it's Robbie Gordon in the lead of this race. And the dynamic of this race has changed quite considerably. Absolutely there. And that, of course, technical difficulties, uh, you know, change up the dynamic of the pack in terms of the running order. Important to note that the same top 10 as well got their 
points, respectable points at the time of the the issues that uh, we ran into. So therefore, they're going to be good. They still got what they deserve for uh, where they were running there in stage two. But now we got an opportunity to hit the reset button, uh, maybe give some other drivers an opportunity to maybe have a second chance here, like Dave Bellaney in that number 77 machine, who currently finds himself third in line there on the inside. Now second in line there. As you saw Robbie Gordon jump up to that outside, and now it's going to be Bellaney and Jeff Green here on the bottom. They're trying to move their way forwards. And the three wide has picked up considerably now at this point. You're already seeing Ryan Newman as well. He was a guy who was battling with Bobby Labonte the entire time in stage two, now trying to find his way to the front side by side with Jeff Green. That inside lane, huge momentum through the corner uh, and, and down this front straightaway, still trying to fight side by side. Three wide for the first couple of rows up here towards the front of this pack. Ryan Newman being super aggressive, trying to grab that lead again, still battling side by side with Jeff Green as we head down into turn one. And now it looks like Jeff Burton's actually going to look to make the move three wide with Ryan Newman. Three wide for the lead. Jeff Burton on the bottom. Ryan Newman in the middle with no help behind him. And Jeff Green with some help behind him up on the top. You see Dave Blaney right there who was able to get that car fixed. Uh, now still running up on the high side in this top lane, having a much better run than he was having in stage two. And now we find ourselves with Jeff Burton in the lead of this race. Uh, three by three by three. This is the most uh, three by three we have seen though all race long. But I still think I think that Jeff Gordon, that number 24 car, I wouldn't be surprised one bit. We come to lap 47, 48 of the third and final stage. He finds himself up there in the mix. Jay, we talked about second chances. Jeff Burton uh, with the reset. He was going to remain on the lead lap anyways. But now look at him. He's all the way up here in the front going for the lead of this race alongside the rookie of Jimmy Johnson who has help from uh, the three-time at this point in real life 2022 with the three-time Cup Series champion of Tony Stewart. Here, I'm assuming we're going to see a lot more come in this time. Yes, we are. There goes Labonte, uh, Waltrip, Kyle Petty, as well. I see Ken Schrader in the very back. You got Joe Nemechek. I think uh, those three cards there in the background are going to be probably, uh, apart from uh, Jeff Green, the previous lap, probably going to be the three biggest losers right here of this whole pit cycle. So Joe Nemechek waiting to the last moment uh, to where he wanted to start pushing through the pack. Might come back to bite him, to say the least. And this pack right here, Jay. Oh. They are looking in a pretty favorable position, probably getting ready to pit this lap. Yeah, expecting many, many more to come down pit road this time. And what we have what we have now, though, is two separate packs. We, we have gotten the main pack split up into two separate groups as they're all trying to get ready to come down to the pit lane right here. But we saw a group pit there. I think this time we're going to see most of our leaders come down to the pit lane. And we'll look right here off turn four. Yes, Jeff Burton, our leader, pitting with a big group right behind him. Certainly Marling in that group. And look even further back in the second pack. Most of the cars in that second group also pitting as well. So this time, the majority of of our leaders are pitting. We still have a group left of pit, but most of them on pit road right now. And again, the pit lane here is so important because you have to have a good stop in order to not lose that pack. So most of our leaders here just pitted, which is going to be good for them. But for those ones who just stayed out, which we're going to take a look at in a moment, this could be really precarious for them because they're not with the main group. And you see uh, Jeff Gordon, Jimmy Johnson, they stayed up. But look at Jeff Gordon. I think he got uh, held up there. Uh, by someone merging back on the track because look at the separation right now between him and the 48 so i think they played their cards completely wrong and look at the difference look at the momentum here with the 31 and the 24 closing in on the 48 so you know what fortunately for them somehow they found a way to kind of regroup by the time they got to the pit lane but i think it's pretty obvious still that nonetheless they lost some time and unless there's some caution or merging issue which we could see but it looks like everybody's going to get through as long as they're not too wide going up to these cars they should be fine it looks like uh that's the exact situation we're going to be dealt with there's not any single issues with cars merging back on the track so now jay it's it's going to come down to who's grouped together the best who's the most organized and how many cars they have in a group and now it's all of a sudden going to become almost like a, a bit of a club wars right here because it's going to be small little groups of cars trying to work together to try and maybe form into a large pack and win this race so essentially what we're dealing with now is, is basically like a situation that we had in stage two we're back with with basically two packs together this second little group right here is going to be able to easily run down uh, our leaders but then we look back here towards the back and there's once again another second pack form and this time there's not as many cars in this second pack and we couldn't see uh, a, a, a second pack with 29 cars versus a first pack with 10 cars catch the, the lead group in stage two and this time in stage three they're they're pretty much even actually i think the the first pack might even be a little bit bigger than the second pack this time so i don't think we're going to be able to see the second pack run them down they're also at about the same time uh back as well about five seconds starting the second run right here and you can see bobby labani uh, is the leader of the second pack as well, which is a good car because we've seen him be strong this entire race, but still, I don't think we're going to be able to see them run down this first group, and this first group 
they're at a really big advantage right now over that second group. Well, you know who they got in that second pack, Jay? Uh, who's that? They got Jeff Gordon, okay? Jeff Gordon's all they need to have the willpower to move that pack forwards and run down that main package. White flag is out. One more lap around for Tony Stewart in the Daytona 500, trying to find his way to victory lane for the first time ever in the Daytona 500. Won everything down here aside from NASCAR's biggest race. And right now, nobody behind him has any momentum. Nobody behind him is even making a push at Stewart right now. I don't see it happening at this point here as they come through the center of one and two. Unless Newman clears that 99, I think it's game over and it's, he's going to be still side by side here. I don't see how anyone's going to be able to do anything for Stewart. And if they can, it's going to have to be in turn three. But once again, you can see, I mean, it's just not going to happen here. here. Stewart has a hold on the field and the three and four has a couple of car lengths to work with here. And no one can get closer than that little bubble right there. And out of four, Jay, I mean, it's pretty much sealed here as they exit the corner. Off turn four for the final time. Tony Stewart has no challenge from behind him through the trial. Well, Tony Stewart is going to win his first ever Daytona 500. And Tony Stewart doing the exact thing he did in real life in the 2002 season where he won the championship, wasn't able to win the Daytona 500 in that season, but he starts off this year in our virtual redo of it with the 2022 rules, cars, and point system with a win. Locks himself into the playoffs to go and try and defend his 2002 title from real life in our virtual, in our 2003 season. So we always know Tony Stewart will have a chance to uh, continue in, in this rewrite of history to actually keep it the same with the champion now, and it's only race one, and still a long, long way to go there. As he so Tony Stewart able to grab his first win of the season, lock himself in the playoffs, and also as well, more importantly, get his first career Daytona 500 win in NASCAR's most important race. There you see the finishing order on your screen. Bobby the Bonnie had a really good stage two, just unfortunately for him, finished down to 17th place, did not have such a good stage three once the field got reset. But uh, I would like to take the time to thank you guys for watching this first episode of our NR2003 NASCAR 20 Years Later series. I'm really excited for it. I hope you guys are as well. I cannot wait to see where the season goes. I know that Gary cannot wait either. Uh, and we'll bring this series to you most likely weekly. So I will see you guys next week for episode number two for race number two at Auto Club Speedway. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.